Hey YouTube, how you doing? Coming back at you with another video from my office, but we're not going to talk about here in my office. Um, if you want to look at those videos, check the end of this video. This is going to be about the cost of running a mansion, the cost of running an estate. You know, um, I've had enough people coming through my house to know that this is a topic of interest to people. Um, you know, when I have workers coming into the house and the window cleaners, things like that. Um, a lot of times, biggest question is, what do you do for a living? That's the first thing. Like there was a there was a house, um, the fire alarm was going off next door. I came outside and I was looking at the house next door and this passerby who called the police, he was thinking, he's like, you live in that house, what do you do? It's the first thing he asked me, perfect stranger. And I said, you know, I, I'm a banker, I work at a bank. It's the easiest way to say it, it's I work at banking, accounting, and finance. So I thought it would be interesting, I think something that's been on my mind is some of the eye-popping costs of running this house that um, go well beyond the original purchase price. So I closed on this house in the end of uh, August. So I've had five months of um, experience in this house now, which has been great, but um, it hasn't come without its costs. So let me just give you a quick, I, I've broken down these costs. I took some notes here into the um, main recurring costs that you would expect, gas, electric, water, stuff like that. And you're gonna be surprised about these numbers. Um, and then just miscellaneous stuff, things that are popping up, because this is a house that was built originally in 1960, and it was updated in 1980. So it's a lot of stuff that can be updated here, and, um, you know, we can build this into it. You could easily take this $527,000 house and turn it into a million-dollar house. But let me tell you what's important. The first thing is, as they say, location, location, location. We're located in the best neighborhood in Buffalo, New York. This is um, this is a neighborhood of all, half the houses here have tennis courts. Half the houses here, most of the houses are on at least one acre lots. I'm on 2.1 acres. I have one of the biggest properties here. Um, but they say don't be the most expensive house on the, on the street. I'm not. There's a house down the street for sale right now for $700,000. There's a house that sold for a million across the street. There's a house that was for sale for 700 across right across the street from me that I could see. And, um, and again, like I said, in other places on the market for 700, I bought in at 527, which is a steal if you ask me. Um, so let's get it. Let's just get to it. The house was $527,000, but I'd like to say this, I put 20% down. So my, uh, mortgage is much more, um, some much more affordable than it would have been if I didn't put down, I put down 20%, which was a hundred thousand dollars. Um, so I have a hundred thousand dollars of equity from day one. The taxes here, we're in New York State, this is a high taxed area. My taxes are $19,000 a year. That's huge, guys. That means when you're looking at what you're, you're looking at your mortgage payment, a very big chunk of that is that $19,000 you're paying. You know, that's being spread across 12 months when you're making your payments. Insurance, I think, I just, I just did the, the property insurance, I think it's $2,000 a year, which is a lot, because if you go on Zillow and look at up you know, it'll, it'll default to like 500 or something like that. So that's insurance. Um, the electric bill. Now we have a billion lights. I mean, you look, look around, just look around this place. There's, there's recess lighting everywhere. And when you have this many, this many lights everywhere, you forget, you forget to turn things off and that shit adds up. And I'll tell you what, the tennis court has 6,000 watts of power. Now, I'm talking to a guy who does home automation systems. He did some electrical work here. He said that we can take that down substantially with um, probably 100 watts each. So instead of 6,000, it'll be 600 if I go to LED. So that's LED, the tennis court, but um, the cost of doing that, I have no idea. Um, so my electric bill, 400 bucks a month. Now that's... Um, that's a car payment for a lot of people. That's a shit. That's a that's a rental payment for some people. That's my electric bill. Um, the water, the water blew me away. Water is usually cheap, but I pay quarterly, and my water. I think the water bill was four hundred bucks. So, one hundred fifty three. Do this math here. Three hundred, four hundred fifty. Okay, so let's just say one hundred fifty dollars a month. I pay one hundred fifty dollars a month in water. Um, and you know what was the culprit of that? There's a, about a $10,000 sprinkler system with 120 heads that is um, serviced by a half-inch water line. 
And um, I thought that was all cool. And I said, let's, I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe why it was, you know, it was broken. I paid, it, it needed about $2,000 worth of work. And I, and I paid for that. Um, so I'm going to actually add that to my list. Sprinkler, sprinkler repair, $2,000. But what that did is it sent my water bill to 400. Usually that water bill probably instead of 400 should be 150. We only have two people living here. So we're paying $400 quarterly for a household of two. Um, and I, I didn't know at the time why he wasn't using the sprinkler system. And I think now I know. Um, so those are the, the main heavy hitting recurring payments that happen all the time. But that's only part of the story. Tennis court resurfacing. Um, <clears throat> eye popping. $10,000 to resurface the tennis court. This house, it's, this house has a super tennis court, and it's, it's part of the reason why it makes me want to, you know, recolor it and make it look as good as it can because it's such a phenomenal tennis court. It's it's oversized. Um, you could have, and they're telling me, you know, to put a pickleball court on it and do all that kind of stuff too. I might uh, when they redo the lines, but um, I was wondering why the guy in the in the basement. I have two fifty gallon drums of tennis court paint, and I was like, this guy's gonna do it himself. Why would he? Why would you want to do that? Well, now I know. 10 grand. I'm going to do it though. Um, once my, once I get my settlement, I'm going to do it. Um, the pool, the pool is in good shape, but it needs some repairs done to it. Um, I have beauty pools. It's a, it's a gunite pool, beautiful pool, but, um, all the concrete around it needs to be resurfaced. And actually, if you really want to get, if I wanted it to look the way I really want it to look, we would put like flagstone all around the whole perimeter. I'm sure that's an easy $10,000. Um, the California closet. So check out the video at the end of this, since we're talking about the house, check out my California closet that's going in on Monday, um, in a couple days from now. And that was $20,000. It's a, and they asked me, they said, can we take videos and pictures of it? I said, sure as hell can. Cause I am, you know, California closets is using this, um, closet, um, as a, as a, as a before and after, um, film. They said they want to use it for like inspiration for uh, new customers and things like that. Um, electricity. For the California closet, we needed to take all the plugs and move them up to the ceiling. Sounds cheap, right? 1300 bucks because I said, oh, by the way, guy, can you give me a floor uh, electrical power outlet in the middle of the family room? Because I had it configured different and I don't want wires everywhere. So I did that and then I put one dedicated line in so I don't know if I got overcharged or whatever. They took like a few days. Uh, it took a lot longer than I expected to take, and uh, they pay by the, charge by the hour, so that's $1,300. Uh, window cleaning. These window cleaners were blown away at how many. I counted up the windows. I have over 100 of them. So 100 windows inside and out, $800. Bucks. Um, this I was considering, should I add it in or not? It's, it's, it's something I would not have bought if I didn't move here. I bought a $4,000 John Deere tractor because... I need that 52 inch deck because I have um, two acres and the way I see it is I would probably be spending a hundred dollars a week in the summertime to get this cut professionally I mean they got a trim blow mow do the whole thing they'll be they'll be here for over an hour um, and that's really expensive so just to uh, to avoid that I bought a tractor which I really like um, and then the sprinkler repair, that was that was a couple thousand dollars and led to our $400 water bill. So as you can see, guys, um, you know, when you, people go down, when I, was, when I was growing up, I used to wonder, you know, what do they do for a living? Like, how can you afford that? And that's the truth. Like, now that people are asking me that question, I guess I know, like, this is a pretty substantial house. I would say this is an estate. This is a 5,500 square foot house with a 3,000 square foot finished basement. So we got 8,500 square feet, two acres, um, a tennis court, a pool, pool table. Um, you know, all it's it, all the I wants. You know, if there's something, I never wanted a tennis court. I never thought I'd have one, but now now that I have one, I can't live without it. I, I wish I can go out and play right now. Um, but this is a true estate, and. Um, the cost, the operating costs are staggering. So I'm guessing monthly with the mortgage and everything all in, we're probably, I'm estimating about $5,000 a month is the cost of living here. So, um, so if you guys were wondering what it costs to run a big house, that's what it costs. Um, 
And uh, if you're if you're in the market for real estate and you're look, just looking at the, the purchase price, you got to take in the whole taking the whole thing and I hope some of these things I mentioned like a resurfacing of a tennis court is 10 grand I thought like you're repainting a tennis court maybe you can do it for two grand no not if you want it done professionally these are these are by people that do tennis courts for municipalities uh, and tennis clubs so I could probably you know I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put it out to tender I'm gonna look for some other third parties and see if I can get a different price um, I'm sure 10 grand is the high end so I'm gonna see if I, I I thought I could get it done for five. We'll see. We're gonna we're gonna try to bring that down a little bit because I do want that tennis court resurfaced in the spring. And then just miscellaneous things. I, I dodged a bullet. I got lucky. Um, I had a lapse in, in insurance coverage and I called in to make a claim because a tree fell on the tennis court and crushed the whole fucking corner fence. So now we got double high fencing crushed. I'm looking at it, I'm like, and the tree getting removed. This is probably gonna cost me five thousand dollars and it's coming out of my pocket. Thank God. It was next door's tree. So I got to go meet my next door neighbor and tell him, hey, uh, could you call your homeowner's insurance company because your tree crushed my tennis court. So we're doing that. So yeah, guys, if you're just wondering what people do to live in houses like this, I'm a bank auditor, I'm a banker, and what it really costs to live here, yeah, like the mortgage is just the beginning um, and everything else that you add to it. And, and I'm having fun, you know. I don't. Need, I didn't need to do all these things. I didn't. I don't need to do all these miscellaneous things to the house, but I want to. So this was the biggest investment of my life, um, to this point. So, so guys, if you're uh, if you're house hunting, happy house hunting, and good luck. Uh, thanks, guys. Bye.